Good evening, everyone. Sister Amy's going to play another song. Give others time to get that one here. Good to see everybody tuning in tonight. We'll be on here in just a few minutes. Enjoy the music. Worship the Lord.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday night discipleship, Wednesday night service. So glad to have you tuning in tonight for our online service and uh, praying for everyone, praying everyone's feeling better that has been sick and just asking the Lord daily to touch you and your bodies and give you strength. Appreciate your prayers for our family as well. Uh, when, this Wednesday night's a whole lot better than last Wednesday night. I was not able to come on, got sick right before service last Wednesday night. Feeling much better this week. I believe we're on the back side of this thing. Um, so just keep us in your prayers. The effects here haven't been horrible. They haven't been great either, but just continue to pray for us in our recovery. I do plan to go and get tested again Saturday morning. And as long as I get a negative test, we plan to be back in service this Sunday. Uh, my kids probably won't be with us because they're still in their quarantine period. But we're both, Amy and I both, already being positive and then tested negative. We feel like we'll be okay. So that's the plan. Is as long as I test negative Saturday, that we will come back together this Sunday for regular services. Just no Sunday school. We'll come together at 1030. And 5 o'clock, no Sunday school this week. Uh, hopefully within the next week or so we can get uh, Sunday school back together. The reason for that being is still uh, Sunday school settings in closed spaces. And though several have already had COVID, we don't want to take any chances. Of course, when we come back, we need to um, make sure that we're social distancing and uh, reframing from hugging and handshaking and those things. Uh, being aware, uh, it seems like this this strand has been much more contagious than the one back uh, last spring. So we need to err on the side of caution and be sure that we protect, especially our most vulnerable, our elders uh, within our congregation. Uh, we found the, the effects on the children. The kids have not been that bad at all. Uh, the main thing for, for mine so far has just been loss of taste and smell. And uh, that's not really a big deal, but it's, uh, it's bothersome. But the effects on the younger is not quite that bad, but the chance of them passing on to the older. All, everything that you've already heard over this whole uh, time, this whole pandemic. So we will be taking those precautionary merit measures when we come back together and continue to do that until COVID is in the rearview mirror and behind us. Uh, we've experienced the reality of it. Many are experiencing the reality of it. Many friends and loved ones have uh, suffered severely from this. So let's continue to pray for those who are, have been suffering, continue to suffer, and have uh, even after effects of symptoms. We want to keep them in our prayers as they recover. Have some of those friends here uh, needing to get home. And they, from what I hear, they're going to fly out tomorrow, finally a place they can fly out. And then have some others that are away from here that want to get back to here, but they're still suffering. So we want to pray for them and ask the Lord to touch them and to heal them and to strengthen them and their bodies as we open up with prayer tonight. And uh, don't forget our missionaries during this time, uh, when you send in your offerings, if you send those in or if you're saving them for when we come back, be sure to mark on their missions so we can make sure that it goes towards our missions, uh, um, our home missions being the, uh, our home missions being, uh, it's slipping my mind. Uh, our home home missions. What is our home mission? Somebody help me out. Our home missions is going into Harvest Time Juvenile Ministries. Just totally went blank there. Harvest Time Juvenile Ministries is for our home missions. And then, of course, the work is uh, in Israel. Not able to go into Israel right now, but Brother Turner is still actively involved in uh and being in, in contact with those that are on the ground there and the work in Israel must continue and will continue. As soon as he can get back over there, he'll continue his work. But we want to continue to support Israel and the work there through River of Life International. So make sure you can keep up your giving and missions. Uh, we do have another CPR home missions project that we're raising funds for. I'll tell you more about it when we come back together. But it's an endeavor coming out of the Doctors Inlet Church of God. Uh, Brother Lynn Whitaker there is heading this up. 
to build a home for a widow. And so we're already raising funds. Some have already given towards that. And not only are we going to raise funds towards that, we want to be involved in the building project. So that's a wonderful home missions project being headed up there uh, by our brothers and sisters over at Doctors Inlet Church of God that we're right in there with them and excited to be a part of that and joining in with them. So we'll talk more about that and begin to raise more funds towards that when we come back together. I gave a post the other day on Facebook and some have responded and gave towards that already. So appreciate your giving towards that and we will continue that effort. Be praying for our upcoming revival and our upcoming anniversary service beginning February 7th will be our anniversary service and then that week Monday through Friday will be our revival. So be praying for those services as well. Asking the Lord to touch and move. And of course, remember our nation. Remember our country and all that is, that's going on right now in our country. We're only about two weeks, just shy of two weeks into 2021. And this given 2020 a run for its money already with everything that's going on. So we need to pray like never before for our country and for our churches and for our liberties. So let's take these needs before the Lord in prayer tonight as we get started and get ready to get into the Word of God this evening. Father, we're grateful to You for the privilege that we have to come together. We're thankful for this platform and this setting that we're able to do so. We don't know how long that we will have the liberty to be able to, to go live and to be able to air a church service. So we need to get back into the church house. Well, we're not dependent upon this uh, this platform to be there for us always, but we're thankful that we have this opportunity to share on this platform of Facebook Live and our Spreaker web radio and, and to be able to bring the gospel out when we're not able to come together. And we pray that you touch those that have been suffering in their body from COVID and even other issues. Uh, COVID is not the only sickness around. I know many may be suffering in other areas. And I just pray for healing and recovery and restoration in their bodies, their hearts, their minds, whatever they may be facing. Touch our friends uh, that are hurting today and just minister to them. I pray, God, that you would touch my home, bring healing in this house, and pray, God, that you would touch our, our children, just give them strength today, and ask you, Father God, to touch our nation and bring healing to our nation and bring strength to us, Lord, as we come into the days ahead, whatever they bring. And I, I just pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless our missions efforts, Harvest Time Juvenile Ministries, River of Life International, New Life Ministries, European and child mission. Uh, all of those that we faithfully support, we ask you to just touch them and to minister to them in the works that they're doing, God. And I just pray that you would just minister in this service tonight, in this setting. Have your way in every heart, life, mind, and soul, drawing us ever closer to you and your will and your way, your purpose and your plan. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's faithful to minister to all of those needs. Uh, as you know, I've started this this uh, this Monday, this week, uh, started doing a lunchtime uh, daily devotional at 12.30. Been going live with that, uh, strictly on Spreaker, on our Spreaker web radio, and just the audio, not having a Facebook live. And uh, we've been doing that since Monday. We're three episodes in to a study on the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, some have expressed that when they try to click on uh, the Facebook link, when it's shared on Facebook, they click on that Spreaker link and go to it. For some reason, after a few moments, they lose the link. The only thing that I know that can resolve that, if anybody pulled it up on the screen here for us, is to go into your Play Store on your device, on your phone, and uh, pull up the Spreaker podcast player. And it says open here. If you do not have it on your phone already, it'll say install. And you can install that as a free app that you can place on your phone and you can go straight into Spreaker and listen to it and not uh, channeling through Facebook. Some reason that connection, I guess, through uh, Facebook is causing some kind of interruption. I'm not sure. But if you'll just click straight on there, bring this, uh, you'll see this emblem here, Spreaker Podcast Player. Uh, just install that on your phone. takes a few seconds. It's free. And then you can uh, search Middleburg Church of God and you'll see that there it should pop up on there to daily devotionals. Click on that and you can go to the episode of the show if any episodes are live at that point. And then you can have it. You can also, if you sign in and create an account there with that, that's free as well. 
Uh, you can put the, to get notifications, follow Middleburg Church of God and get notifications of when we go live. So you, that's the way around that. That's the only way I know around that. And if you continue to have problems, please let me know. And I will also do Facebook Live just with a dark screen because I want to keep this strictly just audio on our daily devotionals. I'm not about getting my face on, on Facebook every day. Um, it, it's this doing this, uh, these online services uh, gets wearisome really uh, getting up in front of a camera. Uh, the desire is for us to get back into the house of God. But I also want to do these devotionals and these podcasts uh, just for um, probably this, this study. We may go longer. I don't know, but we are on the fruit of the Spirit uh, out of Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23 is where we're focusing for the next several uh, days. Uh, do not have any uh, special singer tonight. Uh, Gracie did not have a, a song ready for us this evening to do. Uh, Noah's in class in the other room. And so here it is. We're just going to get straight into the Word of God. Uh, appreciate all of their help. Appreciate all that they've been doing. Sister Amy's been uh, manning the the uh, media for me in the other room. So appreciate her doing that. But we're going to look tonight in James chapter 4. James chapter 4. And verse number 10. James chapter 4 and verse 10. They pulled it out. They got me a slide. There you go. True humility. James chapter 4 verse 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He shall lift you up. Father, I thank You for Your Word. I thank You for, for the challenges of Your Word. The reminders that Your Word gives us each day. And Lord, the challenge that we have before us tonight is... Uh, humility and what is true humility there's a lot of opinions and a lot of thought processes uh, that we could share tonight we could interview this one and interview that one but we don't do that we come to your word tonight and we come here to the book of James chapter 4 to find out what true humility is supposed to be and I need your anointing tonight to share this word the way that you've placed it upon my heart to share tonight and I ask you Father God to open the ears of the listener and the eyes of the viewer that we may receive this word in our hearts tonight and and I just ask you, God, to just place your anointing upon me, the speaker, and them, the receiver. And we'll give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we look there, we back up to in James chapter 4 to verse number 1. I want to read the first 10 verses there to you. It says, From whence come wars and fightings among you. Sound familiar? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lust, upon your lust. You adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, that the Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth the envy? But He giveth more grace. Wherefore He saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. And here's His instructions next. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. And in our text tonight, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. So this word humility, it's a, it's not a word that, that many want to study or many want to define or many even want to look at. Uh, it, it's really a, seems to be a lost virtue in our world today. There's, there's not very much humility, uh, but the world's definition of humility is this. Uh, it's a modest or a low view of one's own importance. Uh, it's humbleness. Uh, and so when the world begins to define 
lacking humility. Uh, it's telling us that we need to have a low view of our importance, or, or at least a modest view of our importance. Uh, that seems like a pretty good definition, uh, a very uh, concise uh, part of humility and what humility should be, but I'm not really interested in knowing the world's definition of any word or any state or any virtue, but I do want to know what the Word of God says about it. And so when you begin to look at the Word of God, We find here in James uh, chapter 4, these first 10 verses, uh, he talks about the fightings and the wars and and what causes these things. Uh, A high-minded thinking, uh, a lustful desire that's burning within us. Uh, We know that we sin when we're drawn away by our own lust. Uh, And James is telling us here that the only true answer for that uh, is to resist that way of thinking, resist that thought process, process, uh, resist even the world's idea of what humility is, uh, to think lower of oneself. Uh, we really, uh, When we really begin to look into the Word of God, uh, we find that the Word of God has a pretty different definition of what true humility is. Uh, 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 we're not to think lower of ourselves. Uh, we're not to think higher of ourselves. But we must find uh, that, that, that centerpiece there. Uh, and that centerpiece is what God says about us. Whatever God says about us is what has to be true. Uh, It's not what someone else's opinion is. It's not even what our opinion is. Uh, We can look and we can find this in Romans 12 and 3 is what he says. He said, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, listen, according as God has dealt to each man, to help to every man the measure of faith. Uh, And understand something there, that God has given us uh, the measure of faith that we need, that we're not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think, uh, that we need to be soberly minded. uh, But we can take this, uh, for instance, if you will, if you you think about the great artist Michelangelo, uh, I read this about him. It said he wore a headlight uh, when he sculpted his creations. Uh, And when somebody asked him about why he wore that headlight, this is what he said. I don't want the shadow of myself to distort my work. That is a powerful explanation of what humility should be. We have talents. We have abilities. We have reasons to have confidence in who we are and what we are and what we possess. No doubt he was a great artist. No doubt he was a great sculptor. But what he wanted to be brought to the forefront is not the man who did this sculpting, but the creation itself. He wanted to make sure the attention was brought on the masterpiece that was being created. God has made us masterpieces. Can I tell you, He's called us to create masterpieces. God has called us to do great things and wonderful things and mighty things. But you've heard me say this before, the the problem with man is we have this this uh, uh, error in our, our ways, it seems. Uh, there, there's a situation with us when you pat us on the back, our heads uh, seem to get bigger. Uh, and we get seem to, to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to uh, because we have a talent, because we have an ability, because God chose to use us uh, as the work of His hand to do a mighty work. Uh, and so what Michelangelo is saying here is, I don't want the shadow of myself to distort that work. Listen, I've been called to do a great work for God. You've been called to do a great work for God. Let's not distort that by letting us, letting ourselves get in the way to think that we need the attention. We need the recognition. We need to to be promoted, patted on the back, our names to be in bright lights and bold letters because we're taking the attention off the work and bringing it to ourselves. Listen, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the kingdom. That's what true humility is. Oh, we could get a hold of that in society today. I've been listening to a lot of politicians over the last couple of weeks and they lack that. They lack that for sure. But it may be lacking in the politician, but it should not be lacking in the preacher. It should not be lacking in the Christian, the child of God. And so we have to begin to do some 
self-evaluations. And I want to look at those three evaluations uh, that we can find of what how people think of humility. We get the first one, as James unfolded in those ten verses, is sinful exaggeration. Sinful exaggeration. That means that you're thinking uh, you're more than you are. That you think that you're more than you are. You think that you are it. You think that there is none like you. There's those that think nobody looks as good as they look. There's none. There's some that thinks nobody can speak like I can speak. Nobody can do what I can do. They think they're irreplaceable. Oh, but to understand that that's just not the case. That no man is irreplaceable. And that's a dangerous place to be. To think that you are more than you really are. We have to understand who we are. We think that we are this or we think that we are that. I've known those that told me I'm self-created. I've got where I'm at today by my own work. We've had many that said this over the last few weeks. The governor of New York said this, that the work that's been done, he said it's not by some work from God up above. He said it's the work that I've done with my own hand. That's a dangerous place to be. That's a high place to be. That's a a place that none of us as children of God wants to be. Uh, Can I tell you that nothing that has been accomplished uh, in 20 something years of ministry uh, through the works of my hands, through the sweat of my brow, yes, uh, it's been uh, from my voice speaking uh, into the ears of man and conviction gripped their heart. Uh, I'm thankful that God chose this vessel. uh, But can I tell you, if I refuse to stand up uh, and do what God called me to do, God would raise up another. God has the authority to raise up and to pull down. So self-exaggeration is a dangerous place to be. So we need to evaluate ourselves tonight when we think about true humility and say, am I self-exaggerating? Have I got myself to a place that that I think that I'm more than I really am? Listen, we're the works of His hand and that's a masterpiece. That's a wonderful thing to be. So so I'm not talking about belittling God's creation, but I'm talking about getting into a place that we think that we're above God, that we can do it without God, that we don't need uh, anyone's help. Uh, No man is an island. We are a part uh, of the body of Christ. The great thing about being a child of God uh, is to know that I'm a part of a kingdom that's much bigger than I am. uh, that far reaches anything that I can touch, but I'm able to be able to make a mark here or make a mark there. That's the important part. We cannot over-exaggerate that. And then on the flip side of that is what we would call false humiliation. False humiliation. And I find this really, believe it or not, I find this more relevant to church folks today than the first. Uh, More than sinful exaggeration. You don't find very many, I'm not saying none, but you don't find a whole lot of self-exaggeration within the church, or I should say not as much as we do false humiliation. So let me tell you what false humiliation is. It's a self-condemnation and to know that it's just as bad as self-exaltation. So what is self-condemnation? Self-condemnation goes something like this. There's others that can do it better than I can. It's that, uh, that condemnation that says, uh, I am not able to do that. Uh, I am not able to say that. Uh, uh, sister so-and-so sings better than me, let them sing. Uh, brother so-and-so teaches better than me, let them teach. Uh, that pastor uh, preaches better than me, go hear them preach, let them preach. Uh, and we begin to think, I'm not as good as so-and-so, uh, or I'm not able to accomplish the task. Uh, but can I tell you that God God has called you with a holy calling. He's placed a purpose and a plan upon your life. He's given us a mandate to go ye into all of the world and to be the light. He didn't say that, hey, I've called you to be the best there is to be. But He said that I've called you that I may use you to reach the world. He has not called us to compare ourselves amongst ourselves. That's a dangerous place 
to be when we begin to compare our abilities to other people's abilities and our calling to somebody else's calling. Oh, don't begin to condemn yourself. Don't begin to think less of yourself. You're God's creation. You're God's masterpiece. And He has a purpose for you. We can't get above that purpose and think that we've arrived and we've become God or or we can accomplish things without God. But we also cannot get to a place to think I'm not able to do what I'm supposed to be doing. If God's called you to do it, you can do it. You can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. So too many times we take that false humiliation that false humility. And many times that false humility comes in that fashion because it's looking for a compliment. It's to say, well, I didn't do good that night. What they're really wanting is for someone to come and say, oh, you did great. You did wonderful. You're an amazing singer. You're an amazing preacher. You're an amazing teacher. And so it's a reverse effort to to get the pats on the back and the recognition by exhibiting some false humiliation uh, to possibly uh, get some kind of recognition. That's not true humility. Uh, So sinful exaggeration is not true humility. Uh, False humiliation is not uh, self-condemnation. It's just as bad uh, as self-exaltation. So where is the median? Where is the center line? Where should we fall in this category uh, when we're talking about what is true humility? Uh, Where should we as children of God stand on this subject of true humiliation. Well, it's something that we call sober estimation. It means that we think of ourselves in a mind-saving way, saying it this way, I am good by the grace of God. That I have been made free that I have been washed clean, that I have been given an opportunity. It's by the grace of God and by the mercies of God that have been renewed in my life from day to day. Oh, listen, I'm not just an old sinner saved by grace, but I am redeemed. I am blood-bought. I am washed. I've been paid for, bought with a price by the blood of the Lamb. And these instruments and these hands, meaning these hands, these feet, this body, this vessel, is now in the hands of my Creator once again. And to understand that I don't want the works of my hands to be marred by my image or my perspective. I don't want to get in the way of the work that God wants to do in and through me. So to know and to understand I am good, but I am only good by the grace of God. Because within myself I have no things to boast over, but because of His grace, I stand before you today as a good man, as a holy man, as a righteous man. And to understand that if I go by my righteousness and my ability to obtain those righteousness, it's just filthy rags, meaning it does not add anything to me. But to understand this, that His righteousness works in me and through me, and I depend completely upon His direction. Adrian Rogers put it this way. He said, true humility is not thinking negatively about yourself. It is agreeing with what God says about you. So how do we find that place? I don't want to think negatively about myself. Don't want to put myself down. Stop putting yourself down. Stop uh, thinking negative of yourself and the accomplishments that God is accomplishing through me. If you're doing that, stop. If you're thinking that you're all of that in a bag of chips, stop because you ain't all that. We've got to find that middle ground and realize that I am who God says I am. And to know something, it's not about thinking negatively about myself, but it is about getting off my high horse. But it's also making sure that I don't jump off my high horse and fall face first in the mud and think that I am nothing but junk and I'm nothing but trash. Listen, you are not junk. God didn't make junk. God makes masterpieces. So you are the masterpiece of God's hand. But also understand this, what Brother Rogers said here, is that we need to agree with what God says about you. How do we find out what God says about us? We ask Him. We ask Him. 
That's what prayer is all about. Remember, I've told you many times that prayer is not a one-sided conversation, but prayer is dialogue between us and God. Prayer is talking to God and then listening for His answer. And then also, we have the Word of God that we can go to and begin to find out throughout the Word of God. I've told you in services past, a good place to start is Ephesians. And we begin to read those first few chapters of Ephesians and really throughout the Word of God to begin to find out what God says about us as His creation. Now, here's what God says about us. John 3.16 tells it best. For He loved us so much that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said it's not His will that any should perish but all should come to repentance. And He did that God thought so much of us God the Father sent God the Son to die on a cruel cross that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly that we can find the power of the Holy Ghost abiding and abounding in our lives remember we're adding unto faith all of these virtues and we are receiving the power to function and to operate and we are restoring the message of Pentecost in our lives. Why? Because I agree with what God says about me. I agree that God said I am more than a conqueror. I agree that He says I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I agree that I can overtake those mountains. I agree that I can pass this mountain long enough that I need to look forward. I agree that when I look around and see sudden destruction and devastation around me that I need to look up from where my help comes from because my help comes from the Lord. I agree with what God's Word says about me. I agree that I am holy. I agree that I am righteous. I agree that I'm redeemed. I agree that I'm born again. I agree that I'm blood bought. I agree that I have been bought with a price. I agree that I don't belong to myself. That I don't make my own decisions and my own choices. But I look unto Him, the author and the finisher of my faith. Church, it's time that we begin to come in agreement with what God says. And the only way that we can come in agreement with what God says is to read His Word and to spend time with Him. So the only way that we can have true humility is if we come in agreement. Let's look at one more place before we close tonight that we can come in agreement with. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. We read here, he said, we read this today in our daily devotional part of this, and we're going to go a little deeper into it tonight. He said, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. He's saying, think this way. He said, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made made in the likeness of men. You hear that? He thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he also didn't make of himself any reputation. He took him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Now, what is that saying? It's saying let that mind be in you. Do the work of God this without making yourself a God. He's saying do great and mighty feats. Oh, do great and mighty things. She said, say to that mountain, be thou removed, and it must be removed. When we know that God has given us authority and we have received power after the Holy Ghost to come upon. We're a powerful people. We're a mighty force. We're the body of Christ. We are an unmovable force that God is working for and moving through. But we also got to realize that it's not about making a reputation and a name for ourselves, but taking that form of the servant. Our general overseer said several years ago this way, it's time that we lay down the title and pick up a towel. And we begin to humble ourselves at one another's feet. Let's read on. Verse 8. And being found in the fashion as man, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God hath also hath highly exalted him. God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. God does the promoting that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ 
is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He didn't come self-promoting. He didn't come trying to, to, to take and make a reputation of himself. Neither should we. It shouldn't be about self-promotion. It shouldn't be about self-gain. It shouldn't be about using the ministries we talked about uh, this past weekend that too many people take and they use it as an opportunity uh, to exalt themselves when it's convenient to them. Those that will use the Word of God and quote the Word of God uh, when it fits their agenda. No, we need to get out of that formality uh, and that process and begin to know what the Word of God says we are And what the Word of God says that we're supposed to be doing. So what does the Word of God say that we're supposed to be doing? What do we as Christians need to be doing? Well, the first thing that we need to be doing is positioning ourselves in the right place of being truly humble. Not the the world's definition of humble, not our definition of humble, but the Word's definition of humility. And to understand is what Brother Rogers said. I want to to share that again. True humility is not thinking negatively about yourself. Nobody's asking you to think negatively about yourself. Matter of fact, that's self-destruction. That is a horrible place to be in. If you don't think positive about yourself, what makes you think anybody else is going to think positive? If you don't have a good self-view of who God says you are, it's going to reflect in your image. People who don't think much of their self, they don't do much to take care of their self. They don't do much to have good hygiene. They don't do much to to, to keep a a good appearance. They don't do anything to help make themselves better or to get anywhere in life. So it's very uh, uh, self-destructive to do that. But it's also understanding that we can't begin to, to get full of lust and vain glory. But he just put it this way, Brother Rogers did. It's just a green with what God says about you. So that's where we need to be. What, what does God say about you? Now, you can depend on pastor to tell you what God says about you, and I've laid out a bunch of things tonight. But do you know what God really thinks about you? Well, I don't know, pastor. Talk to him. Have a little talk with the Lord. Get a prayer life. Quit depending on somebody else to tell you what God thinks about you because if you ask Him and if you get into His Word, you'll begin to find it for yourself. When you begin to, when I read it to you, it's, oh wow, that's, that, that's neat. But when you begin to, to get into that Word and begin to dissect that Word and begin to study that Word and begin to get a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I've told you before, you can't depend on a second-hand gospel. A second-hand gospel is not going to get you anywhere but too many within the church today are living a Christian life with the second-hand gospel. What does that mean? Everything that they get from the Lord is through somebody else. They're getting the Word of God through somebody else. They're dependent on somebody else to pray. They're dependent on somebody else to do the work. It's time that we roll up our sleeves and begin to get to work for God and to say, listen, I want that headlight on like Michelangelo because I want to do something for the work and for the Lord, but I don't want me to get in the way. I don't want my reflection to to hinder that. I want to make sure that everything that is done is through what God tells me to do and what he would have me to do. Do you know what God would have you to do? Well, we can begin to say, well, I know what God don't want me to do and what, what I shouldn't be doing. But do you know what you're supposed to be doing? I don't think that very many people outside of ministry, of preaching, teaching, and singing really think about that. They say, well, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a singer. I'm not a musician. Well, what is it that you're supposed to be doing for the kingdom of God? Because I want to tell you tonight, there's ministry everywhere, but it's waiting for you to find out what God says about you and waiting for you to get involved and put your hands to work in that with that humble attitude. Here's what God thinks of all of us. And here's the mandate that God has given all of us. And these are verses that we've heard a lot and we need a lot right now at this time in our country. And I'm going to close with this verse found in 2 Chronicles chapter number 7, verse 14. Many can probably quote it. And we begin to read here. It says, if my people, get that, are you his people? 
Are you his child? And he's talking to you. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, get this, shall humble themselves. This is where our subject tonight comes in. True humility. And what do people do when they humble themselves? Exactly what I told you. Communicate with God. He said, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. You know what will happen when you begin to pray and seek his face? You'll turn away from that self-exaltation. He said, they'll turn away from their wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You know what God's waiting for? He's waiting for us to grasp what true biblical humility is and become those truly humble vessels that He's created us to be. God's got plenty of work for us to do outside of preaching, teaching, singing, playing instruments, outside of platform ministry or classroom ministry. Ministries everywhere. There's missions works that does not involve any of those. There's mission works that you can do that you never even have to say a word. It's done by the works of your hands that you do great and mighty things. Too many are looking for a title. But let's lay down the title and pick up the towel. Let's become servants of God and say, Lord, whatever, whatever it is that you say that I'm supposed to be doing, that's what I want to be doing. That'll take a, a shy boy from like I was not wanting to say anything. I'll put him on a platform. But it'll also take a person that has a lot to say about everything. It'll silence them that maybe they don't have much to say. They just put forth action with their hands. It's great when God uses our personalities. He used Peter's personality for His glory. He used Paul's personality for His glory. God will do that. But sometimes God will take and just turn us completely around. Pull us out of our comfort zone and begin to give us talents and abilities and anointing to do things that we never thought possible. That's going to take true humility. Let me read it to you again and I'll close in prayer. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. Everything that God is wanting to do in this final hour depends on us humbling ourselves. Pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and for, will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Our land needs to be healed, but it depends upon us figuring out what true humility is according to the Word of God, finding God's view of you and being in that position of true humility. Father, I've delivered my heart tonight. I've shared Your Word exactly the way that I felt like You would have me delivered in this midweek service. And I ask You, Heavenly Father, that each one of us will find our place in the kingdom. What You would have us to do, that we would just humble ourselves, not only in Your presence, but humble ourselves at the feet of others, ready to serve. Too many wanting to be exalted. Too many wanting to get recognition. Too many wanting to be served. But a true leader serves others, puts others before Himself, just as Jesus did. Help us to to do that, God. Help us to humble ourselves, pray and seek Your face. Turn from our wicked ways, our wicked ways of thinking, our wicked ways of doing. Lord God, that You may hear from heaven. Forgive us of our sins. Mighty God, heal our land. That's our prayer tonight. That's our desire tonight. We thank You and love You and praise You for what's going to be accomplished when we truly humble ourselves in accordance to Your Word and Your will. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching tonight. Praying for you and your families. I call out our church families' names in prayer every day. Lifting up each one of you in prayer. We'll continue to do so. Continue to pray for us. I'll give you an update as soon as I get my test results after I go Saturday. I'll let you know about Sunday service. But the plan is to come together for 10.30 service Sunday morning and then again at 5 o'clock. So I look forward to that. Hoping to get back in the house of God. So pray, pray the pastor gets a negative on his COVID test this Saturday. And I love you. God bless you. And once again, appreciate you coming on here. And I know it's been a weird few weeks. We've started out 2021 weird. But we're going to hit the ground running. Restoration is going to continue in 2021. God bless you. Come back, hopefully together, it's Sunday. If not, I'll see you here live. God bless you.